in to integrate the value chain from the producer to the consumer. And for this reason, we focus our ecosystem in three main pillars. Please change. Yeah, there. The first one is capacity building. And here we refer to all the training, workshops, and knowledge developed and produced based on the specific needs and realities of each organization we work in. The second one is technology that implies traceability and transparency. And in Manage for Nosotros, emphasize the positive and long lasting impacts of new technologies, such as blockchain, for example. And these solutions are already in place to create or reinforce economic development between actors presenting enormous possibilities for organizations that lack integration in supply chains and giving them a greater visibility while tangibly also measuring and communicating the traceability and environmental impact of the product. And the third one and final is financial inclusion because we consider that any initiative that lacks investment does not actually represent a significant impact in the life of 30 cent producers and micro and small firms. Um, so due to this, we regard inclusive finance as a central component in our ecosystem, finding new opportunities to contribute to its development in collaboration with different allied institutions and the implementation of alternative financing, such as cryptocurrency. And all of these, please, if you could change again, is reflected in our toolkit, exactly, that is an an open source of digital education platform that shares resources, tools, and promotes collaboration and co-creation with a focus on integration of underrepresented communities. And it uses design thinking methodologies to catalyze social innovation in the fashion industry. We value local wisdom and nature best practices in these communities. And by integrating traceability, transparency, conscious design, storytelling, the finance, and financial literacy tools into our educa educational courses, we are able to assist and give them the tools to create equitable opportunities in these communities. Having said this, I would like to proceed with the topic of this lab, please if you could change again, that is the empowerment of youth. One, one, one before please, one before, yeah. So we have to change the speech uh, about youth. Youth right now is about 16% of the world population and we need to stop seeing them as a passive agent, as some kind of recipients of past decisions. And we need to see them as active agents of change and provide them with tools, opportunities and collaborative models to engage in conscious practices for changing in the world 11. And Hecho Por Nosotros, we seek this based in three different ways. The first one is Given a, giving a voice for them to the global, of the youth to the global south and encourage them to make an active role in building range models for a sustainable future. We believe that especially the youth of the global south have unique perspectives and unique experiences that can contribute to innovative, innovative solutions. And through collaboration, we can harness their creativity, resilience, and local wisdom to drive positive change. The second one is emphasizing the need to support young leaders into developing sustainable initiatives. The voice is not enough, we need to pass to action. And we can do this by providing them with capacity building opportunities, access to finance and technology, and advocating for policy changes and incentives and prom that promote circular design perspectives. And the third one is exploring the role of storytelling in bridging the gap between producers, artisans, and consumers. As I said before, this is really important because it can create a deeper understanding and appreciation of the impact of the, of the product, you know. It helps consumers connect with the values and stories behind them. And it creates a sense of sense, it creates a sense of shared responsibility and accountability in promoting sustainability and regenerative practices. And it's in the frame of these actions and objectives that today we come with a group of panelists that will tell us about the project's experiences. So Regardless of the time, we hope you can stay and please share the discussion and initiative with us. Thank you again. Now, yeah, I'm here now, finally. <laughs> <laughs> now we continue with our first speaker, Luis Jose Montgomery. The floor is yours. Luis Jose? Hi. Hi, I am here. Sorry. Oye, mándale mi saludo a él. Sorry, sorry. Le digo, le digo. Le digo, eso yo le digo. Sería para despedirme. Connection problems. 
Ok. I have my, my webcam ready. Ok, so my uh, pleasure for me. Um, I am Luis Jose Montgomery. I, I am working in Camposol at this moment. Camposol is a, a Peruvian company focused on, on the production, packaging, and commercialization of fresh fruits. Um, I am the innovation manager at the company. So uh, I have uh, an experience uh, maybe of five or six years in R and D and innovation process. In this uh, way, uh, it's like a, an amazing travel <laughs> because it's, it's, it's a, I mean, working with in the agriculture sector is, is, is passionate. Um, and working in the R and D of this sector is like the best. I mean, we, we are uh, focused on the development of new products, for example, new fruits, new fresh fruits for the company, for the world, I mean. And our purpose, like a team, is to, the, to build uh, an R&D center, an innovation center with the capability to design new fruits. Uh, and we want that this fruit, uh, I mean, uh, must to be aligned to the uh, sustainable objectives in the sense that we work, we want to to produce like a health for the people because uh, it's not. Um, I, I mean, we are talking about blueberries, cherries, maybe avocados, uh, but these fruits in the in the background uh, have a lot of uh, vitamins, a lot of, of antioxidants, and and this kind of metabolites are like a, a, have a lot of benefits for the health of the people. So we want it. We want it that we are aligning to that in the in the in the in the process to 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 reach this kind of uh, products. We um, we try to uh, to do in a sustainable way. I mean with respect to the environment, with respect to the communities, to the people who want to work and, and maybe make their practice in, in our company. Um, I will I will talk about uh, some of some projects of us. We are working on genetics, for example. Uh, no GMO declaration <laughs> uh, in that way. We are working on genetics, uh, I mean, in the uh, Mendel way. <laughs> we are working in the designing of new health fruits like dragon fruits or cherries. And we want to validate these kind of crops in our conditions in Peru. I mean, uh, we believe that uh, this, could, this could be a big opportunity for another sectors and other regions in the country. Because the, uh, I mean, in, in all this time in, in which the agriculture sector in Peru uh, growth maybe at 20 or 25 percent in all this time, uh, the, I mean, the the star region was is the cost, the coastline of, of the country. Uh, I mean, we, we work in the desert in in a condition very traumatic. I mean, in the uh, always against the climatic change. But um, in the R&D process, we want to, to develop a um, new business model uh, involving the, the mountains, for example. Another region in my country in which the poverty has high levels. So this is like a, an opportunity to this part of the, of the country to develop uh, wellness, to, to develop, uh, develop, I mean, to develop uh, like happiness for the people. So we uh, build all this uh, uh, process uh, with the help of, of young people, uh, with a lot of uh, uh, 
uh, focus on uh, the diversity of the people. Uh, we we work with with many uh, in many countries, okay, Latin American countries, but also uh, with our clients or our offices that are in Europe or maybe in Asia or or in US. So the diversity of cultures and the and the different uh, point of views uh, is very important for us to, to build our innovation portfolio. I want to finalize this inter interview uh, mm -hmm. with um, one another another uh, initiative that I have. In this in this uh, adventure in the R and D and innovation, I made a mastery on innovation and entrepreneurship in in Adolfo Ibanez University in Chile. So about the entrepreneurs, uh, I I like a. Uh, see the light of the entrepreneurship. Uh, so uh, I have a startup in this moment, have a startup. The name of the startup is AgroClub. I, I will share with you guys uh, the, my LinkedIn account and, and the, the website of AgroClub. Mm -hmm. AgroClub is a, a startup focused on the digitalization of the knowledge. And this knowledge is special, specialized on agriculture way. So we want to spread the, uh, the agri, agri knowledge, uh, the technical knowledge in, in, this, uh, in this sector to everybody. In a, I mean, we want to democratize the, 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 the democratization of the knowledge in, in the sector. Um, for, for, for the agriculture, for the, the students maybe, and obviously for the people who are in the first steps in the in the in the in the sector in the in, in this industry, because the unique way that we have in this moment to, to learn in agriculture is to go maybe to uh, maybe symposiums, but they are very expensive for the people. So we want to digitalization digitalize the 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 good practices in the agriculture. I mean, the harvest, the pollination, the nutrition, maybe the packaging also in a, in a high level, a high definition video and share with the, the people in a, in a membership uh, a business model with very, very low cost to everybody and spread and, uh, the knowledge of agriculture every part of the world. So thank you very much for this invitation. Um, that's it. Well, thank you, you, Luis. It was really interesting listening about your experience and this uh, startup that you are developing. Uh, shortly, we will now hear, because it's late in India, the two speakers from India that we have. The first of, uh, of them is Arabin Kanan. He is uh, an Ashoka green change maker, and well, without any other delay, Arabin, uh, you can open the microphone. Hey, thanks. Um, I think when I, when this event started, it was yesterday. So uh, if I lose my train of thought in between, uh, uh, do um, bear with me. Um, I, as um, uh, Rocio said, I'm, I work with Ashoka, uh, it's one of the many projects that I'm part of, but currently the focus that I bring in, the focus that I bring in um, is from an open innovation perspective and the current, the current open innovation project that I'm part of is called Green Changemakers. And uh, so the perspective that I want to share, and I'll try to keep it as short as possible, uh is around funding and if we can move to the next one um i can um i don't know who, who's controlling the slide if we can move to the next with the uh, 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 okay okay you don't have that okay i can i'm happy to i'm happy to no i thought i i think in the slides it was there so i was a little confused um anyway so um i think i'm here to share perspectives from a couple of lenses. One is from, yes, like uh, uh, economies and you know, geographies like India. And the second is from the perspective of a funder. 
right? And what that what that means. Um, um, I think when it comes to the current trend in terms of the artisanal work and craftsmanship, we're obviously seeing like a massive reduction in uh, people not continuing to do that. People who are part of those families and not continuing to do that. And uh, on the other side, we're also seeing these a generation of uh, new gen social entrepreneurs who are sort of building their own boutiques and trying to revive some of these um, uh, businesses. So it been at a very interesting juncture when it comes to the creative economy. Um, and uh, the I think I, I had I was sort of recently having a conversation with uh, a friend of mine who who runs a climate finance. Uh, organization and i think the main focus of that conversation was uh you know uh, i mean here there yeah. you have the presentation the little uh, the uh, anterior uh, there you have the presentation so there there is if you can read and, and i don't know and comment you're free Sure, sure, thanks. Uh, so yeah, feel free to read through it. But essentially, the the core of the conversation uh, is basically that uh, when it comes to funders, especially fund, I think right now we are in this place where we are trying to redirect funds from say deep tech and hyper growth uh, sectors to uh, to to something like the creative economy. And I'm I'm not saying that is the only thing that's happening, but that's among the many things that's happening. And what uh, deep tech funders generally do is they have, let's say there's a $100 million fund. They generally say split it among, uh, uh, make it into two big chunks and give it to two, two, two ventures. And they're like, okay, go, go, you, you pump all the money that you need, uh, grow fast, fail fast and stuff like that. Right. But on the other side, when you look at, uh, how an artisanal business runs, it's like they know they know how to be frugal. They don't need that much money, right? So there is there is that opportunity to be like, okay, I have a hundred million. Why why can't I split it among ten different businesses, for instance, right? And unfortunately, we are not seeing that happening. I think through my conversations with climate finance entities, I don't I don't see that happening. And it's like they're taking a certain framework from a different sector and trying to apply it here. So I think the point I'm trying to make at the end of the day is there is an opportunity for people to unlearn and relearn. And I think people like us and the communities that we are part of, we can enable this because the people who, who, who hold this money are going to play a big part in helping such businesses uh, in, the, in the creative economy survive and grow. So I think there's a there's a there's a big need for learning and unlearning that needs to happen and yeah i think uh hopefully we can uh go on this journey together uh, to that place and yeah i think that's 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 the end of what i wanted to say thank you so much aravin and our, our apologies to all the speakers and members here present for the delay we had today but I think it's really interesting and, I mean, inspirational also because we have to unlearn and relearn things a lot. And we are like, in, so many young people are in generations that are changing the way of seeing us and see also uh, another spheres of our life. So I think it's really interesting with uh, with a great enthusiasm uh, i will give the this space to suhey mehrag also from india he's working on the connecting dreams foundation and he's head of youth engagement and global partnerships at this organization and well th this organization is in charge of organizing the summit uh change makers that is focused on youth empowerment uh, in the framework of the G320 um, summit this year, which India has a presidency. So, Suhail, you have the, the word. 
thanks thanks so much uh, thanks so much uh, i mean it is really uh, a pleasure and i was like listening to my colleague from india and i was really happy to know the perspectives which are being uh, created by individuals like him i mean uh, first of all like congratulations to your team for having such a great uh, collegium of people who are out there working and you know who really share perspectives which could promote sustainability and could really help communities and add more uh, life to the planet uh, again like as you have as you like introduced me so my name is sohail maharaj i had youth engagements and global partnerships at connecting dreams foundation india so connecting dreams india foundation uh, so we've been playing a provider role in promoting the circular economy among the youth uh, of india and uh, world uh, as a forward thinking organization we have actively engaged and uh, empowered young minds to take up like sustainable uh, practices and innovative solutions uh, so we are one of the india's largest youth organizations when it comes to work directly with the youth uh, in college uh, and schools uh, wherein like uh, we have been training uh, youth uh, through multiple tools and uh, basically we empower uh, communities with the tools and we help them to sustain uh, the change and uh, sustainability is something which has been at the center of our organization and uh, we been trying to uh, create the atmosphere like you know which could really help uh, people to take up collaboration because we really see there is an immense uh, Uh, potential for collaboration to help people overcome the challenges which are there so uh, as you as i don't know how many of you were part of the main session and uh, we had one person from india anshu he is probably leading the goons and he was telling you like you know see it is relatively hard for us to sell the idea of sustainability or maybe circular economy uh, to the people like you know who do not have food okay so i think see that's where the collaboration comes in uh, so there has to be a collegium of people i was really happy to see people from diverse like backgrounds today taking part at the summit and i think uh, people working uh, across diverse backgrounds really need to come together and uh, really help uh, uh, the uh, times to 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 change and uh, i i i really agree i mean you know i do not need to touch to the technical points of the circular economy uh, but uh, i i think uh, i would really summarize it and sum it up that circular economy you know it, it is something that uh, is very promising uh, it's a, it's a, it's actually a promising path to achieve both goals uh, go, both uh, goals which could really help add uh, more uh, life to this planet and uh, help this uh globe sustain uh, uh the problems which are there and uh, I, i i also like believe so strongly that young people across the globe really need to come forward to take up this initiative and uh, i would really uh, endorse it like you know, i don't know how many of us are like working directly with the government but i think uh, education systems across the globe really need to pitch in for the circular economy in fact i i we have been uh kind of promoting the sustainable curriculum across the india where it, like we work with some schools and colleges uh so maybe like this can be one of the themes which uh, they could include in their curriculum where students can be taught about like what is circular economy and how this could really help us you know to uh overcome the challenge because this is something which would really promote like principles of reducing and reusing and you know recycling you know it could really promote the principles of like uh, which you know this three three cycle and uh, apart from that i mean uh, there is there is always a need for collaboration i don't know i do not want to get into the technicalities of uh, this uh, particular topic but i tell you that uh, you know young minds have a remarkable capacity uh, for innovation uh, like you know 
uh, they really need to embrace the principles of uh, circular economy and they are the ones who can help build tools and localize uh, solutions that would cater to the unique needs of our diverse communities. And uh, I really want all of us to take something uh, of, out of the, this meeting uh, for now. Uh, maybe like, you know, we could uh, generate consensus among each other, like, you know, how we can maybe uh, uh, transform some channels through which we can maybe pump in expertise and resource, uh, which would help us to lead this work ahead. I mean, uh, this this is really a pleasure. And uh, again, like, you know, I, I really uh, uh, appreciate the work which uh this organization is doing wherein you know they are trying to bring in like stakeholders from across the globe you know working and uh, uh they, i mean this this is this is this is i believe the another way to incentivize uh, uh i mean the change uh, which is there and uh, which which really needs more attention uh, and uh, i mean uh, there it, this this is, there is never late for this uh, work to be done uh, i mean uh, we definitely, uh, and I personally like advocate for policies that promote circular economy. So there has to be an additional push. I I should really suggest that maybe if there are like some local uh, agendas which could be taken up or promoted, or there are like national policies uh, across the globe, like in uh, countries uh, in Asia Pacific, or may, maybe across the globe, you know, wherein policymakers. Uh, demand like incentives for businesses that, that adopt like sustainable practices and penalize those that continue to follow the linear module you know which is there i mean uh i i i would uh, like in, in conclusion say that circular economy presents us with an opportunity to not only protect our environment but also fosters a thriving and resilient economy uh as young individuals you know we all hold the key to unlock the potential and lead uh the world towards sustainable future. Uh, this is the time to embrace the circular economy. Let's spread the awareness and take action within our communities to build a better tomorrow. Thanks so much uh, for this opportunity. Thanks so much. Thank you, you Suhey. It was really nice to hear you. And also the photos shows a little bit of the work you do, are doing currently and you have done in, in India. Uh, we need to be really concise. So the next we will hear is Mayra Molina, also from Latin America, Ecuador, particularly. Uh, she are part of FLAXO, uh, the Latin American um, Faculty of Social Social Sciences. So keep uh, take the the take. <laughs> oh, so please talk, and well, we will hear you. Would really an interest uh, approach. Eh, hello, everybody. Eh, bueno, les voy a presentar eh, mi trabajo de investigación eh, realizado en la Amazonía ecuatoriana. Eh, la Amazonía ecuatoriana, bueno, es un punto principal eh, de interés por su alta biodiversidad. Eh, posee una asombrosa riqueza en lo que es fauna y flora. También es una zona de alto extractivismo en el Ecuador por la explotación de petróleo. En esta zona habitan eh, eh, personas de origen indígena en varias comunidades y riberas eh, de las cuales algunas permanecen en aislamiento voluntario. Desde el punto de vista ecológico, la Amazonía es considerada una zona estratégica para el planeta por su papel como sumidero de carbono. Eh, en Ecuador se aborda varias políticas de conservación a los ecosistemas mediante la regulación de zonas y áreas protegidas. Eh, la participación en planes estratégicos frente al cambio climático y la protección de la biodiversidad es acogida en, en nuestro país. El Ecuador aborda estas políticas eh, dentro de planes estratégicos en la búsqueda de estrategias de vida sostenibles que disminuyan su extensión en el territorio amazónico. Es así que las comunidades indígenas en la Amazonía eh, llegan a través del impulso de estas políticas al cultivo y venta de productos nativos en cultivados bajo sistemas orgánicos. Uno de los principales organismos que se han formado dentro de las comunidades indígenas son las asociaciones. Eh, estas asociaciones, eh, una de las principales de la provincia del Napo es Huiña. La implementación de estas políticas de mitigación afirman que se promueve una sostenibilidad de las comunidades 
amazónicas y proponen este tipo de cultivos. Entre ellos, el principal producto impulsado es el cacao. De esta manera, las comunidades amazónicas han entrado así a sistemas de economías verdes o bioeconomías. Estos sistemas de mercado son muy competitivos y de alta demanda mundial. De esta forma, la investigación se centra en cómo la incorporación del cacao fino de aroma incide en las estrategias agropecuarias de los pobladores quichuas en la provincia del Napo. Eh, la investigación se realizó en las comunidades quichuas en Santa Rita. Esta comunidad de Santa Rita eh, se caracteriza por la producción de cacao fino de aroma. Para esta investigación se utilizó el marco conceptual de medios de vida sostenible, el cual se enfoca en cinco capitales principales. Este análisis de los cinco capitales dentro de la comunidad se hizo una encuesta a varias eh, hogares dentro de la comunidad quichua y los resultados eh, se tienen en esta gráfica donde realmente eh, llama la atención que ninguno de los capitales eh, cumplen con un valor de índice sostenible. Estos valores de índice sostenible son bajos del 0.66, el cual reporta que estas comunidades presentan muchas eh, problemáticas y dentro de sus fortalezas se encuentran dos capitales, que es el natural, obviamente, el de los territorios amazónicos, también se encuentra afectado por su bajo índice de diversidad. Además del capital social, el cual corresponde a, a las redes que han formado, igualmente se ve afectado, puesto que hay muchas rupturas en algunos casos por problemas eh, internos de las comunidades. Por lo que es importante reconocer que estas políticas no se mantienen eh, con el con el objetivo y la discursiva de que se promueve la, la sostenibilidad dentro de las comunidades. Es necesario establecer la diversificación de estrategias para que estas comunidades puedan mantenerse dentro de los sistemas de economías verdes. Es importante reconocer que actualmente las políticas impulsan al, a la producción de monocultivos que perjudican también a los sistemas agropecuarios dentro de las comunidades quichos. El marco utilizado dentro de este sistema fue adaptado para hacer estas mediciones, pero eh, lo importante es reconocer que en cada persona, en cada comunidad, se tenga acceso a los recursos y a las oportunidades necesarias para desarrollar medios de vida equitativos, resilientes y que respeten los límites del medio ambiente, promoviendo así el bienestar y el futuro de, de los mismos. Thank you, Muchas Mar gracias. It was really interesting because it's when we if, when we think about the Amazonian um, forest as the as one of the main green spaces in the world, it's also nice and it's also important to think about the people. And I mean, uh, this research it's really interesting. So if you can share then. Uh, I don't know the link uh, to find it uh, and read it and about it. Uh, we will really appreciate. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Mayra. Estuvo excelente. Y bueno, si luego puedes compartir el link de la investigación, con gusto la voy, la voy a estar leyendo. Me pareció muy interesante. Ay, muchas gracias a ustedes, ¿no? Ahí les comparto. Gracias. Por favor. Now we will hear some really young, young woman from Africa. She's Palisa. And I, 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 I have a lot to say about her because she has a really extent um, biography, but mainly she's the founder of the Sidma Sasa Library, an initiative empowering youth and women of color in the visual arts industry. So uh, with no other prelude, Palisa, you you can turn on your microphone. Hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for inviting me today. I am really, really excited to be here. Uh, just as a note, it's almost 10 o'clock in the evening in South Africa. So if I look a little bit tired, excuse my my um my look um no i am really really ex i'm really really excited to be joining you and seeing a lot of young people in the session 
I'm no longer young. I'm 36 years old. Last year, I was 35. And in South Africa, young people, the youth are categorized from 18 years old to 35. But I'm glad to be invited anyway. Um, so let me just start by acknowledging Hecho Por Nostros for the invitation, as well as the stakeholders that are here today. Um, and I'm glad to see Ashoka in the room as well. Um, my paper today is a presentation actually by some of my colleagues within South Africa and the creative cultural um, economy. And I'd like to contextualize my role. I've been an arts practitioner for over 10 years now and sustainability and environmental sustainability particularly has been part of my practice. Um, in my view, I think it's important to also mention that I also write on sustainability and art and the intersection thereof. Um, but I, I have seen some developments within the South African context through this report that I am sharing with you today. And it's basically a report that was written and drafted in 2017 by my colleagues at the National Arts Council in South Africa, as well as my, my colleagues at the University of the Free State, um, which was basically to cultivate a space for engagement around climate justice, as well as sustainability. And I'm going to contextualize it as well by zooming into a project later on that I worked on particularly this presentation. So as you see in front of you, you have the aims of the project that I'm talking about, and it was titled The Role. Um, I'm just going to go back into uh, the slide. It is, uh, can you go back uh, to the first slide, please? Yes. And it was titled The Role of South African Arts and Culture in Climate Justice and Environmental Sustainability. And the aims are really delving into some of the issues that have been presented here today in the main event that many of the cultural practitioners are also trying to, to put forward in their own practices. There are several aims as you can see in the presentation, but I really want to particularly zoom into one aim that we tried to, to work through in our project with the Business and Arts South Africa. Uh, Business and Arts South Africa is an agency that was cultivated by our government to support the cultural and creative industries. And I worked as a consultant on the project that was called Climate Culture Program. You can go to the next slide, please. And the Climate Culture Program was really centered around the, the four uh, elements that we have in our in in the world, which is obviously air, water, um, earth, and fire, and we wanted to bring about a conversation around those four elements, and it was called the Climate Culture Program, and we tried to make sure that the online hub operates as a space for engagement and cultivating pockets of community as well as making sure that young people are able to access information around climate justice. And we all know the impact that we as a country have, has had in terms of our history politically. We needed to find a space where young people could access information easily without having any hesitation around what it is that they're looking for. And we created the online hub. Can you go down please? So about this program, as I said before, I was one of the consultants who worked on climate culture, and it was really important to have a very vigorous conversation with very multi, multi um, talented practitioners. And we created a video series where young people, young founders could speak about climate justice as well as sustainability, centering their own businesses and their own initiatives. And the document that I have mentioned, the, the, the research document that I mentioned earlier on was really centered in making sure that we had a theory of change. And that theory of change um, was really a document that put together the, way, the, the mapping together all the elements that we wanted to achieve within this online hub. 
can you you going a bit uh quickly can you go to the to the other part of the website please go up please uh can you go up uh to the other side of the slide okay Yes, I wanted to to center the theory of change. Thank you so much. Um, and this document really maps out exactly what are the steps that we want to take in ensuring that we have some sort of climate justice within our environment. And in this section, we particularly focused on the theory of change because it's actually a world renowned way of us to articulate exactly what we want to achieve as South African art and culture practitioners. And this theory of change uh, catapulted our action into actually having other people come into the conversation and we created the video series, which is housed on the website on the Business and Arts South Africa platform, and you can easily look at it on the website. Um, can you go down, please? Can you go to the next part of the website? Thank you. So as I said before, I am going to read from um, the document that I mentioned, which is actually centering the project. And I want to really emphasize what the report said about South Africa from a different, from a, a cultural and art perspective. And, it, and I quote, I want to really quote from the document so that we really understand that we're dealing with issues as everybody has said, of inequality, and we really need to center that as well. The report also emphasizes, and I quote, the environmental neglect has gone hand in hand with, with social and cultural oppression and the, and the entrenchment of socioeconomic inequality, driven by a neoliberal agenda, which has defined value in purely financial terms in purely financial terms, profit at any cost. This worldview is siloed, denying the interconnection of environmental and human health, and the stewardship of resources and financial sustainability. And I think for me, just to round up everything that has been discussed today, it's really about making sure that we have climate justice within our own art and culture framework, and as the report is easily available to everybody, one can easily access the report. And I think Hecho Por Nostros, uh, um, some of the team members have already shared it on the, on the chat box. And it's really a fascinating document that really talks about how we can combat these challenges and the gaps that we are facing as climate change makers, as well as arts and culture practitioners. Um, and I think for me, that would be my, my sentiments for tonight, especially listening to some of the speakers that have talked about funding, that have emphasized the inequalities that we face in marginalized communities. Sorry, I don't, um, know, I don't want to interrupt you, but now the, this meeting will finish in 40 seconds. It's a lot. I didn't plan that. I don't know why. Oh, sorry. Who closed the, okay. the labs? No problem. The... Thank you so much. Uh, Rebecca and Eddie, are you there? I will add to the report of this lab the lines that you can share with me about what you want to do to say. So that will be reflected on the um, document docu document from this lab. Okay. I really yes, sorry. Yes, I don't know definitely. who who maybe the the I don't know. I don't know what happened. It, today we were are having really bad luck with Zoom. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. No, I'm really, really sorry.